You know, the ocean is full of life that is unknown to science. These are animal systems that have evolved over very, very long time periods to be, you know, successful at living in this really different environment. And if we could study that life, what could we be learning from it, right? Are there things that they do that we could potentially learn from, like reverse engineer and apply to new systems in energy generation, transportation, materials? I don't have the answer to that question, but if we don't have the capacity to observe this life, then we'll never have the answer. I'm Kakani Katija. I'm a bioengineer as well as principal engineer at Ambari. Oh, it's so like tiny. Christmas. Yeah. These are the tiniest, cutest little cameras. In this particular room, we set up a lots of new imaging systems. Our group, the Bioinspiration Lab, focuses on use of imaging and how we can incorporate imaging either as new instruments or parts of new vehicles and platforms to observe life. This instrument here is called DPIV. It's a laser-based illumination system, so it allows us to see inside of gelatinous and mucus structures for the first time. And we've been using it to study giant larvations that create these beautiful, we call them snot palaces. So these animals are able to secrete mucus, and this mucus secretion can form these really complex, beautiful structures that play an important role in filtering food from the water around the animal. And for the first time using DPIV, we were able to do these scans and then reconstruct in three dimensions an entire model. So you can now do a fly through inside and around these mucus structures thanks to this DPIV technology that our group has worked on. What's been really interesting is how looking at something so small can have such a big impact on the environment. This is what the DPIV data would look like. The stuff on the left is what you would see. These animals play an important role in filtering water. And what we know is just this population of larvations that are in Monterey Bay, they're responsible for sinking about a third of the particulate that winds up on the sea floor. And that means they have an incredibly important role when we're talking about carbon cycling and effects on climate. My path into science actually started out with, you know, me being a very big nerd and I'd watch Star Trek reruns with my dad every day. This is a star field, a fake star field. I wanted to be an astronaut. That's why I actually started out in aerospace engineering. That's my background. All of a sudden we transition to the ocean and then wound up instead of applying that to flying vehicles let's say to instead start focusing on you know animals in the ocean there's estimates that say there's anywhere from 30 to 60 percent of life in the ocean that we have yet to describe who wants to start this week for me i think mostly for everyone at ambari we're all driven by this mission to learn more about the ocean and i think having that shared mission means that we are willing to push harder, try more, fail more. That plays an important role in, in how, we, how we work together. That is the secret sauce. <laughs>